Hi guys, I know a lot of you haven't seen me yet, but my name is Kirsten Hahn. I'm one of the new hires at Her Interactive and I'm super excited to start working on this project with you. As you guys know, I was tasked with kind of looking at similar games in our field um, in preparation for development of our new game that I thought were really great. Um, one game that I decided to analyze I'm going to be talking with all of y'all about today is a game called I Am Dead. It was made in 2020. It was produced by a British indie game company called Hollow Ponds, and then later it was published by Annapurna. Um, I think it's just a really great, calm, relaxing kind of adventure puzzle game, but it really does a lot for storytelling that we don't see in a lot of games like that. Um, so basically today what I want to do in this short little video that I'm sending y'all is talk about the great things about this game which really rely on the storytelling, the world building, things like that. But then also talk about the negatives of this game which include kind of no choices and other elements such as that. I'm also going to talk about how we can improve those cons and also add more interesting elements to our game. But first I want to show you guys a game trailer from I Am Dead. Hello there, I'm Boris Lupton. I was the curator of this museum on the beautiful island of Shelmiston. And let's get this out of the way right now. I am dead. But it's not a big deal. Oh, hello, Sparky. Hello, Morris. Are you showing them your ghostly powers? Oh, yes. One thing about being dead, I can do some new things. <laughs> We're using Morris's trick to track down some other ghosts here on Shelmiston. Right now, we're looking for Ogden Beckett by finding his treasured possessions. Ah, oh, this must be his ship in a bottle. Ah, here's the cue for the toast. Oh, the fish folk love toast. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Morris. Let's go visit the lighthouse. Ah, this is where my old pal Pete Noach lived. He used to run a yoga retreat here, which is now run by a robot, of all things. Ah, here's Pete's grapefruit tree. Oh, it's lovely inside this, isn't it? Morris, we need to find the ghosts. Otherwise, the volcano will destroy the island. Sparky, I didn't want to worry them about the volcano. If we keep looking inside these lovely objects, we'll find the ghosts and save Shelmiston. Now that everyone has a sneak peek of the trailer and kind of what the game looks like, I wanted to go more in depth of the plot of the game. So basically the game follows a main character named Morris Lupton and he's a museum curator on the island who has recently died. So you are playing as the main dead character. Once you die, you're reunited with your also dead dog named Sparky, and Sparky knows a lot about the island and what it's going through. Basically, the island volcano is going to erupt and you have to save all the people on the island. The reason the volcano is going to erupt is because there is someone called a custodian that kind of looks over the island and makes sure all the spirits on the island are calmed down. The current custodian, ghost of the island as you would say, wants to retire, so it's Morris's job and Sparky's job as well to find the new custodian of the island. There are five eligible people on the island to become the custodian. To find the candidates, first you have to find memories of these people left behind. This will help Sparky smell them out. So to find the memories, you go to people with thought bubbles above their head. For this, you can see little stories about memories of the people who have died that you are searching for. Usually in the stories, there's a little item that is very relevant to the story, such as a medallion that the person lost. Then in the game, you have to find the medallion in real life, and this will help Sparky find the dead prospective candidate. To find the objects, you have to use this new ghost power that you have gained, which is basically to slice through all objects. This is the main puzzle portion of the game. Through this way, you meet all five of the eligible candidates for custodian. Basically, as you maybe could have guessed, um, none of them want to be the custodian because the custodian has to stay on the island and can't go basically into what the game refers to as heaven. After all five candidates for custodian say no, Morris and Sparky decide to take a last ditch effort and talk to the current custodian, whose name is Aggie. This is a little bit harder, however, since she is not a human that has been alive recently. She was actually alive during the Bronze Ages. 
To find her memories, Morris and Sparky actually go back to the town's museum, which is the museum that Morris owned when he was alive. In the museum is the actual body of Aggie, who also contains memories from her time period. After you unlock all of Aggie's memories, she comes alive as a person where she gets to talk to Morris and Sparky. The last scenes of the game are Aggie, Morris, and Sparky walking around a beautiful beach on the island and basically talking about what heaven is. It's a very vague ending. It kind of insinuates that they're going to let nature take its role and that the island volcano is going to erupt. The beach could symbolize heaven, but overall it ends on a very vague tone. Okay, now that we have a little idea of what the game plot structure is, I'd like to talk about a couple of the pros and really great aspects of this game. My first biggest pro of this game is that the characters are super interesting and multifaceted. You really get to explore these complex characters throughout finding their memories and unlocking them in each game style. Mainly this is done through the five custodians and also Aggie. So these are the characters that you really get to explore their background. One example of this is Greg Litherland. He is one of the eligible custodians that you have to go through. Basically, he owned a little RV park along the island. Throughout all the memories and stories you hear about him when he was alive, you basically find out that he was an avid bird watcher and he loved owls. He also was kind of misunderstood and kind of known as an annoying rule following freak. Um, so there's a lot of funny stories about that. You also find out that he loves photography, he loved this silly little racing game that they played on the island. So just him is one example, there's many other characters explored in the game, but I think what this game does so well is that it explores many characters and they're not one dimensional, so they really take a lot of effort into writing the stories of these characters. Another aspect of this game that I think is amazing is that it has great world building. Um, there's a lot of stories that are intertwined, not just of the characters, but of all the places. The culling of the Morlos, this is kind of a seal type animal that they used to kill um, in a kind of big celebration and a lot of the characters make a rally so this celebration ends and they more respect wildlife. Um, and the story of the Morlo cull transcends all the characters in the game. So it's these little elements that really bring all the stories together. You see all these elements in different stories, you see them in the buildings, you see them in the art style. So I think this is something that the game really knocks out of the park. One last thing that I thought the game did amazing was that there was a lot of different gameplay styles for different players. What I mean by this is this game is pretty casual, it's a relaxing game, it's not really meant for any hardcore gamers, and that's what it's meant to be. So the game is firstly made for casual players, but they also have different kind of game modes to interact with more player types, such as there are things called Grankins throughout the entire games. They're basically little monster spirits that you can find by snooping through different objects and rotating objects in a different way. I think this really appeals to completionist players, so I like how this game definitely targeted more than just one player type. Now, even though this game was great, there were some cons that came along with it. I think the first and most visible con is that it was a very linear story. They played all of the five main characters that you had to explore the past in a certain order, but the game could have totally mixed that up and allowed you to see the characters in different orders. I just think that there was no sense of choice as much as I had wanted in this game, and I think that's something that we should really strive to work on in our game. Another little annoying con of this game was that the voice acting was very beautiful and both the main characters' voices were great in this game, except that they talked in a really slow pace. For me, who's a fast reader, it made more sense just to read what they were saying than to sit there and listen because it felt like a very long time. Even though this game is supposed to be relaxing, I think there is a balance between these two things, so I think it took away from the story a little bit. Now to me, those were the biggest problems with this game, but I think what we should be thinking about on our team is how to really build upon this story model and what we could do differently. I mentioned a little bit on the con side, but I think that we should really rely on telling a non-linear story. All of the elements can come together, but giving the player some chance or choice of actions really can go a long way, I believe. Also to reference to the voice acting again, I think we can definitely make it more quick paced, especially for readers who don't want to sit there and listen to an audiobook for the entire game. Some different points I'd like to point out. So the entire puzzle function of this game kind of relies around cutting through objects, seeing their insides and finding the objects within them. 
It's a really cool mechanic and I loved looking through all the different objects, but after a while, the puzzle format does get a little boring and easy. One thing that I think we should strive to focus on in our game is to make a variety of puzzle types. They can be the same style and aesthetic, I just think it would really interest viewers to play more than one puzzle solution to really keep the action of the game flowing. Another thing that I'm really seeing in games nowadays is multiple endings, especially if you complete other tasks in the game. As I mentioned before, the plot is a little vague at the end. I would have loved to see this game give you a fuller ending if, for say, you collected all of the special items or the Grunkins in the game. I think our game would be really amazing if we created at least two endings. It wouldn't be that much work on the writer's team, and I think it would really add to the player experience. That being said, I hope you guys learned something from this presentation. Personally, I really enjoyed the game I Am Dead. I think it showed some great things about how to do storytelling in an adventure puzzle game. It had great characters and great world building. It just kind of lacked with this very linear model and also kind of just some of the voice acting. I think with our game, we could do a lot better and we can really improve upon this model. Thanks for listening.